Let's talk about positive reinforcement. Say hi to the people. Hi, people. to my channel. Today we are going to talk about positive reinforcement and how that can change your world, how it changes our world, how it shapes our behavior. I hope I serve the science justice. So I did take some notes, not even a lot of notes, but a little bit of notes <laughs> before um, to get me started. The first thing I'm gonna have you guys do is, um, excuse my dog, she's sitting right by me. I would like you to tally how many times I take a sip from this metal straw in this video. How many times, starting now. Mm -hmm. So, um, Skinner developed, BF Skinner developed the science of or developed operant conditioning. He basically found that if you reinforce, positively reinforce the behavior, it is more likely to happen again. He studied pigeons. He put them in what they call a Skinner box. Um, so he really um, had a very controlled experiment where he had a pigeon inside a box, it pressed the button and um, down came some food and the pigeon pressed the button again, down came some food. So getting that positive reinforcement, the food, the pigeon now was constantly pressing the button to get the food. It increased the likelihood that the pigeon was going to press the button. Now, this works the same for us and he believed that all behavior is learned and that all our behavior is reinforced by something in the environment. Um, when we say hello to somebody, it's usually reciprocated with the other person saying hi back, which reinforces our future likely behavior to say hello when we see somebody that we know. Now, if you say hello to somebody that you don't know, they don't say hello back, which probably is punishing and decreases the likelihood that we will say hello to somebody we don't know. I need a sip. So positive reinforcement is super, super strong. It is used to shape behavior. And in the field of ABA, shaping behavior means reinforcing small successes until that big target that we are reaching for. For example, if I am teaching somebody how to say my name, Yara, I might first say, say, yeah, and then they'll say, yeah, and I'm like, yeah. I am reinforcing the y, yeah. and then the next time I won't reinforce the y, yeah, and I'll reinforce the ya, yeah. ya, yeah, closer to the to the target yara, and so on and so forth. So that is called shaping. Skinner also showed that if you reinforce um, small successes of behavior, you can shape the behavior. What he did is every time the pigeon in the box turned to the left he would press the thing for food to come down. So then the pigeon kept turning to the left, the, the food came down. The pigeon kept turning, so the pigeon learned that every time it turned, it would get some food. So eventually he got the pigeon to turn all the way around. And man, this man, B.F. Skinner. So pretty much, I mean, that, that pretty much sums it up for you guys. I would love for you guys to pay attention to how much you positively reinforce behavior for your children in the home. Now, I know culture plays a big part in this. 
Um, I know like in some cultures, they don't hear, you know, parents aren't like, good job, you did this. And oh my gosh, that looks great. They don't do that that often, you know? Usually um, the positive reinforcement or the attention, actually not even positive reinforcement, the attention from the parents occurs when the child engages in some sort of child, like maladaptive behavior. Like if the kid breaks something, oh my God, what did you do? Or um, if the kid falls, ah, are you okay? What happened? Da -da -da -da. So a lot of attention, which serves as a huge um, function for children, is given after negative behavior rather than the positive behavior. Um, at least a lot of times. Pay attention to your environment. I think I want to end off with that. Cheers to you guys. I hope you're drinking your water and staying safe out there and hand washing and and increasing the amount of times you're hand washing. Um, we will probably talk about data in the next video. I hope you guys enjoyed this and I will see you guys soon. Say bye, Phoebe. Say bye. This serves as a reinforcer. Come here, come here, come here, come here. Come here and then you'll get the ball. Come here. See, my child does not listen no ball um so what i would like for you parents to do is to reinforce you know um and reinforcement looks different for everybody some kids love high fives telling them giving them praise some kids you know if you if they if you have a child on the spectrum they may not like you know loud praise and and or being touched and given a hug or high fives maybe they want a special treat or maybe they want um tokens if you guys have a token system at home which i will also talk about a token system um but basically reinforce your child when you see um appropriate behaviors or, or behaviors you want to see more if your child is sitting down listening at the zoom listening listening on zoom to the teacher give them some praise hey i love how you're sitting down and listening to what the teacher is saying you're doing awesome um and slowly but surely you guys could even shape it as well so if your child could only sit for 30 seconds on the computer let's start with reinforcing 15 seconds then 30 seconds and then one minute and then reinforcing after two minutes you could systematically do this by collecting data so that you are aware of how often you are doing so and if you know changing that interval of time or changing that 30 second to one minute if you're doing it at a at a good time for your child to learn um it really varies per per child but this is just information that you can use in your home to positively reinforce the behaviors that you want to see more of so that is listening to the teacher at school sitting down appropriately following directions following your directions um being safe in the home throwing trash away um drinking water washing hands right now especially you know playing nicely with siblings petting the dog uh, reinforce all the positive things and see how the behavior changes. This leads me to data and why data is important because it helps us, it helps us to see if what we are doing, if how we are intervening, if how we are, if the changes to the environment that we are making are affecting the behavior that we, the behavior positively in a way that we want to see it change or is it affecting it you know in a negative way where we don't you know where we're not seeing the results we want so that way we can modify our intervention and modify what we're doing to the environment i really hope um that i'm explaining this very well let me know comment below give me your feedback i would really appreciate it um, I hope you guys have a fabulous day. Stay safe out there. Wash your hands. Wear that mask. And I'll catch you guys later. Bye. I almost forgot. If you counted four, you are correct. Hey, you just analyzed behavior. Woohoo!